Well, as you can see, we're back to testing this trash can idea. I wanted to jump right back into this and figure out if this trash can would really give us enough attenuation at the HF frequencies. And the best way I could do that is to get this trash can out there next to the antennas and try it. My seven and 3.5 megahertz antennas are verticals, ground mounted, and so it worked out really good to take the whole setup right out there to test it. Worked out to about an eighth or one eighth wavelength away from those antennas worked the best. It was a good compromise. If I got um, too high a signal strength into that meter, it really doesn't do us any good because it overloads it and then we don't really know what that top end of that it's actually there. And so this worked out pretty good. I wanted to keep it around minus 30 because at about minus 28, this, this uh, meter I figured out really starts to flake out as far as accuracy. So I wanted to keep it around minus 30, which I think we did a pretty good job of that. So let's look at these numbers and see what we found. Before we jump into it though, I want to say one thing. I changed the bottom end of the scale that we're using to minus 110 instead of minus 115 like the last video. I figured out this little meter really is not very accurate below minus 110, at least not on the scale I'm using. So 110, minus 110 is what we're going to be using. And I'm sure these can, this can is actually going to be better than what this shows, but 110, minus 110 is going to be our floor for this experiment. So at 3.56 megahertz, we actually wound up with 76 dBs of known isolation or attenuation, which is really pretty good. At 7.11 megahertz, 78.5. At 50.11, it wound up 77.5. Now this is using the 110, minus 110 is our baseline. It could actually be quite a bit better than this, but at these numbers, it's actually looking really good for this can. So since we just spoke about the 50 megahertz thing, I wanna apologize for that footage you just saw earlier. It was kinda of shaky, kinda of out of focus, and here's why. I had to lay the meter over on its side to get the polarization correct for the antenna that I have up on my tower, which is actually up at about 120 feet. So it's obvious I was not gonna take this trash can set up up there to do this experiment. But by laying the meter over on its side, getting that polarization correct, I was able to get that signal strength quite a bit up over the previous video. But it wound up the perfect spot for this was on our trampoline. Unfortunately, the wind was blowing, so the trampoline's moving. And so it wound up a little bit shaky. And then the other thing is I had to lay the can over on its side too, so we had room for the antenna on the analyzer to fit. Well, that didn't give me much room to work with for the uh, camera and the analyzer. So the camera was a little too close to the analyzer, but I got what I needed out of it. So that's the reason that footage was like that. Now, the other thing I wanna to try today is grounding this trash can and then try it at the VHF and UHF frequencies where we saw some leakage into the can before. See if it improves it at all. I'm not really sure what to expect out of this. Like I said in the previous video, I've worked in Faraday cages before. All of them have been grounded. I don't know if this is gonna improve this can any at all, but I'm kind of thinking it might. I'm not real sure. If you've got a guess, stop the video right now, leave it in the comments, and then we'll see if you're right. I'm kind of anxious to see how this turns out, so let's get to it.
Nice. Now there were some results in here that I was really not expecting. I expected once that can was grounded to see better attenuation across the board. But let's look at the numbers here real quick. On VHF, before we grounded the can, we had 74 dBs of attenuation. Once that can got grounded, that dropped down to 71 dBs of attenuation. Now, I wouldn't put a lot of weight in that. That's probably well within the margin of error of this little analyzer. So let's just call that one a wash. But once we stuck a ground on the lid, it dropped down to 65 dBs of attenuation. And we'll jump into that in just a minute. First, let's look at the UHF numbers. Ungrounded, we had 43 dBs of attenuation. Once we grounded the can, that jumped up to 64 dBs of attenuation, which is not a small number. Remember, every 3 dBs, you're cutting that signal in half. So 20, almost 21 dBs of attenuation by grounding the can at UHF frequencies. Now let's look what happened when we stuck the lid on, or stuck grounding on the lid. We dro dropped from 64 dBs of attenuation down to 49 dBs of attenuation. That's almost the same as we had with the can ungrounded. Now, if you look at the VHF frequency for a minute again, with the lid off the can, before we grounded that can, we had 23 and a half dBs of attenuation. Once we grounded the can, it dropped down to nine dBs of attenuation. There are some factors that could be in play there, some uh, RF coupling going on. So, you know, that's not a, I'm not too worried about that. But what I am worried about is once we stick that lid on, how much attenuation are we getting? And by grounding the can on VHF, for some reason, it didn't make a lot of difference. And then once we grounded the lid, it actually made it worse. Now, why is that? Well, I've got a couple theories rattling around in my head. At first, I thought it was the cable length that I used, of that braided cable. So I changed it out to a totally different length, quite a bit longer. Made no difference at all. I took the ground strap back off. It went back to the way it was before. That attenuation was higher. And it's really kind of got me boggled why putting a ground strap on that thing would make any difference at all. It's pretty well grounded by just by physical contact with the lower part of the can. So why is the ground strap causing that issue? I'm not real sure. We're going to have to experiment some more with it to try and figure it out. I have struggled with this thing for a couple hours back and forth, putting different straps on, grounding it differently. And mind you, what you saw on camera, nothing penetrated that can. The clamp on the bottom that came in, that's just a compression clamp. And it's on the bottom lip of the uh, can. And the top, I just drilled the, the handle for the lid. So there's no penetration to the can itself. So why does this ground strap make any difference at all when you connect it to the lid? In my mind, it really shouldn't make hardly any difference. But for some reason, it's dropping our attenuation down quite a bit. So we're going to have to come back and play with this some more and figure out what in the world is going on. Well, I'm going to wrap this video up for today. I just wanted to jump back into this real quick while all this information was kind of fresh in my mind. And I had a lot of unanswered questions in my own mind about how this actually performed at HF frequencies, which I pretty much answered those questions today. This thing would perform fine at HF frequencies as a Faraday cage. I would trust it, wouldn't worry about it. Now at the VHF and UHF frequencies, there is some leakage into this can. And that created some more questions in my mind today was why grounding that lid actually made it worse. We're gonna come back to that later and see if we can figure that out. We'll also do some modifications to this can to see if we can improve it. 
We'll also test an older can that doesn't have perforations in it for the handles. The handles are welded on that one and see if it performs better than this one. And of course, we're going to come test other items that we have around that could be used as EMP shields and see how they perform. I know the video format was different today. Sometimes I just need to change it up and today was one of those days. So if you didn't like it, I'm sorry. If you did, give us a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching, subscribing, and taking the time out of your day to watch these. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Yes, it was funk music. <laughs>